if you have a system that is role-based, this is what you want to do. Here's another example for it. I'm going to encourage you to do a lot of diagramming by hand. Have you ever been in meetings where you really want to capture a diagram, but you don't have that fancy tool installed, so you don't do it? What I'm really telling you is um, effective modeling is to be able to get up, draw on the whiteboard, and have your stakeholders engage in drawing. So you actually become a coach for them. You show them how to draw. It's very simple techniques, right? And you let them come up and say, oh, well, you know, no, 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 I think here is when we do this, and here's, you have engagement. If you're just the one modeling, everybody's sitting down, it's kind of boring. You gotta get people up and, and really going, okay? Here's another type of process diagram. I don't know how many of you use it. This is an alternative path-based. Extremely important. I go to so many companies where the problem that we're talking about has nothing to do with roles, who's doing what. It's all within the system, and there's a success path, a happy path, and there's a gazillion ways to go wrong. Have you had that problem before? That's the process that you're trying to diagram. The process that you're diagramming has nothing to do with multiple people interacting. It's more of a, there's the linear happy path, and here's all the exceptions. That's when you should use this kind of a diagram. Because if you mix them all together, it's very hard to read. And if your diagram is hard to read, it's worthless. Your diagram has to be understandable by anybody. If people don't understand, if it's hard, if it's too complicated, if you've got seven processes in one, people won't read it and won't consume it, right? So this is an example of an alternative view type of diagram. The other third angle Remember I just said there's like there's three angles to look at requirements from. One is from a user perspective, one is from a process, the other one is a user interface perspective. If you can cover these three angles, you've at least done the best that you can to make sure you really have full requirements. Because each angle is a different way of looking at the system that may answer completely different questions and more requirements will come up because of it. So the goal is to gain the high level architecture. How many of you guys have done this on a project where at the beginning, you felt it was the right thing to do, which is to start mocking up at least the general skeleton of, of, of the website or the, or the project, right? How was that helpful for you, sir? What did the users think about that? How did it help you in the middle of the project? Did you find requirements from it? Tell us a little bit more. They found us good way of requirements. The text and struggle. They were able to see it. Wonderful. You know, it's kind of like the people that build the house. It's kind of like me hand waving to you about the house and never showing you a mock or a diagram or any examples at all whatsoever. Or even walking you through a mother model home. The only reason builders do that with you is because I need you to help visualize, right? I'm trying to help you visualize what, what the situation is so that you can give me your feedback. Imagine that our entire house requirements would be hand waving. We'll see, and the lamp would be kind of there, you know, and um, that wouldn't work out very well. So going through this is extremely useful, and that's why I'm telling you a lot of methodologies, even that I've been teaching and that I've been seeing, even the non-agile ones, are all coming together and saying more diagramming, more pictures, more models for business analysts. So this is again just real quick, you know, quick and dirty. Here's the desktop application. Here's the three links that you can go from there. One's going to be the student profile, search for student, and then I can search for seminars. From the student profile, there's four different things that I can do. I can accept the fees, I can add a seminar, I can drop. Do you guys kind of see? So you're just basically taking a flow, probably putting some UI names on it, or UI numbers, just to identify that these are different. Um, and then this at least is a step one. What you're talking about is you take it even to a step two, and you mocked up and you drew very, very quickly, you sketched out. We did that at Mutual of Omaha one time, and trust me, it was the only reason we were halfway successful, is because all the screens that were involved from the very beginning, we just drew, you know, we're not going to nitpick on how many fields exactly and what are the fields for the search for seminars. We could be a little bit off, but right now we're just trying to get the idea of how it's going to flow. All right? Another example, UI, uh, site map example. This is more of a, I guess you can use a fancy tool. But please don't let the tools get in your way. I mean, if, I, if there's any message I really want to give you today is as a business analyst, a lot of the work that you do 
is so valuable and you absolutely don't need a tool to make it happen. You can, put, you can use a tool to document it, you can use a tool to maintain it, but when you're in that session and you're eliciting requirements, your tools are your hands, your brain, and your knowledge and your skills. Your ability to draw, to say, this is the part, this is the part where I need to kind of sketch a diagram. Um, if you do not know, if you haven't seen enough pictures by hand, agilemodeling.com really is a great website. Whether you're doing agile or not, this is really just about drawing pictures. So that's the website you can see a whole bunch of artifacts that a business analyst you can draw yourself. Okay. So. Um, if there's any, I'm going to ask you for questions right now, but if there are questions that I haven't answered when you fill out your evaluations, please do write them at the bottom. We're also recording this, and so if you want to get a copy of this video, I'll see you just mark that, um, including the PDF. The idea that I wanted to make sure we, we left from today is that there is a process to requirements gathering, and there's definitely a process to stakeholder analysis. It's not something that just happens. If you don't sit down and think about it and say, Here's how I'm going to do it. Here's what I'm going to approach it. Let me use these techniques to brainstorm. Let me use use case diagram. If you don't design the process that way, you're probably not going to get the best results. Even if you're time crunched, just tell them, look, I'm a business analyst, and for me to gather requirements, there are four steps I have to go through. I have to go through visioning, brainstorming, breakdown, and then a deep dive. And that is the process. If you went to a developer right now, They'll say, look, I have to go through unit testing, I have to go through code review, this is what we do, this is our standard, right? And so you need to have a standard that you can get to follow, even when you are a business analyst. Um, understanding the requirement levels is critical, and hopefully that's what we'll talk about next time, is how to differentiate and how to stop the discussions from going into the deep dive. We're, we're sitting at the 5,000 level foot view, and somebody's like, well, what exact server are we going to use to implement that feature right there? Well, exactly how will the data transfer from here to here? Why are you using the word customer? Shouldn't we now talking about them as member? Let's have that discussion right now. That's called data governance, okay? That's like a whole can of worms right there, right? Um, these discussions, everything has to have a time and place. And if you mix them all together within the same session, it's not going to be very good. Um, I hope that you also learned that you should use a lot of creative techniques from now on when you're doing requirements, such as shadowing, such as modeling, drawing pictures, um, some of these techniques too. So questions. Questions about requirements analysis or stakeholders analysis. Was this helpful to you? Yeah. Alright, very good. Thanks so much for inviting me. Please do fill out your evaluations. If you have any questions, I'll be right there. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of the day.